hello and welcome to the Reapers. So, another educational video today. So, we did about a week and a half ago, we did a video I did on my own of Fox One Combat, uh, so, i.e., using semi active missiles uh, from a flanker or a mirage. Uh, it wasn't a particularly good video because I don't know much about it at all because I don't use that type of missile, uh, so we've got lots of complaints. Um, so, it was really just me watching um, Forty Nero fight uh, uh, an AI computer guy, and it mm, was alright, but it wasn't, it, it, I think it yielded more questions and it actually solved. So, uh, I've got the two boys here, I've got Coffee and Fortunero with me today, um, who are hard to pin down, but we've got them, so let's make use of them. Um, first of all, I figured we'd blast through some questions that the viewers had from the old video, and then if we can get it working, we'll try and go through a new human versus human video, and um, see if we can wrap everything up. The last video we did was Fortinero in a flanker versus, uh, well, uh, I think it was another flanker and an F-15, but they were against AI guys. AI, AI is a bit weird. Sometimes they're, well, what I find, sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're really thick as muck. Um, so you never really know what you're going to get. Uh, but either way, it's never as good as fighting a human player. Okay, first of all, uh, reading out from the viewers, you slid right past the essential three points. Uh, sorry, the essential point three times. How do you hold the lock in the middle of extreme evasive maneuvers? So, uh, Fortinero is attacking a hostile, and he is maneuvering, he's dodging the enemy's his missiles, he was doing barrel rolls and stuff like that, but still maintaining the lock on the hostile. So, what's your description? Have you got any tricks to doing that, Fortinero? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, you know to know you have to know, sorry, uh, what are the limitations of the uh, of your antenna movement in the flanker, in particular. And some, uh, something else, uh, you can use your hit down display to keep an edge in where uh, your antenna is pointing. I mean, where are, are the limits? You will see like a triangle. It's not a triangle, but mm -hmm. uh, that has some boundaries. Um, with a barrel roll, a uh, high she barrel roll, the, it's very useful because you can, at the same time, just bleed the energy of the missile that is coming to, towards you. That depends on, on the distance, of course. And um, you can keep an angle of let's say uh, 30 to 35 degrees towards the, the target and keep the limits of your uh, antenna uh, just in, I don't know how to say it, I mean, so you, keep, you, keep the loop. There's a triangle in your head down display, isn't there? So does that triangle, do the left and right edges of that triangle show the limits of your radar at all times? Yes, it's a little tricky because uh, sometimes, I mean, you, you can't be uh, seeing the, that screen all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. you you need to to see outside, outside and your HUD, your uh, radar warning receiver, so it's a little tricky. You have also in the HUD a signal that tells you when you are about to lose look, that is your launch authorization blinking, mm. or um, I think it's, I don't remember the letters, but it's like an AFK, AFK signal that start to blink also in the left lower corner in your hull that tells you, tells you when you are about to lose the look. You need to, if you, still have situation awareness what is your position because that is the most important you will make a maneuver that lets you aim better the antenna towards the enemy aircraft i think it's a t k like something like attack yeah, uh, yeah, alpha, it's yeah, really okay, like. yeah this between the bbr and the a that, that tells you if, uh, if it is a friendly or foe. It's an ATK. Right, gotcha. So what we can say is when we're maneuvering about and we're trying to keep the hostile within our radar cone, uh, within our radar limit, so the LA, LA starts flashing when we're getting to the edge of our cone and also uh, an ATK Alpha Tango Kilo 
mark at the near the bottom left of the HUD will start flashing when uh, we're getting near to our, the extremes of our radar. So those are good two empirical things that we can look at. Um, when yeah, and that move. obviously that obviously just applies for the flanker and flanker mm -hmm. D. In the Mirage, it's useful to just uh, periodically take a look at the radar and see where it is in relation to the edges of it. Roger. So that's like the heads down display on the flanker, I guess. I'm guessing you have a kind of triangle or something, or something. Or do you have a? Yeah, on the Mirage, there's a overhead view, much like in the, much like in the flanker. Okay. Um, and is there anything else to add? Uh, so what was the question? The question was how you do the stream maneuvers and keep the lock in the middle. You don't keep the lock in the middle, do you? You just got to keep it within the cone of your radar. That's all you've got to do at the end of the day. And did we yeah, say that, that we actively uh, sh can actively shift the radar left and right in the flanker? Is that a thing or is that my imagination? You can no, do yes. that when you're scanning. You mm -hmm. uh, so do you do that in, well, where, in the, during the fights, during the... Uh, during the maneuvers or mm, not in the no. fight for example no. if you are in an environment where there are no ecm you can use the track while scan in the flanker to help you to uh, in point your antenna with all made made in, um doing a hard look i mean a single track uh single tar target track just pointing your antenna and that will let you to make some maneuvers and prepare you yourself for a, a more aggressive maneuver. Mm -hmm. um, but like in the F-15, when you have an environment in where uh, there are ECM, you can use your track while it's scanned. So you have no more remedy that maybe a hard look on the target. So that's one of the reasons that could help you a lot in uh, keep your antenna in the correct position because uh, if you have an ECM and you can't use the track while scan, you need to move your antenna. For example, if you are cranking to the right and you you are being illuminated by a radar, that tells you that the target is on hot. So you can change your um, PRF, your uh, pulse r radar to high pulse radar, and that will allow you to uh, get uh, the target in in the scope m uh, with a little more range uh, and more faster. Roger, yeah, yeah. We talked about the the PRF, yeah. Okay. Uh, but the, the problem is in that case also. Uh, that if the your enemy knows that what he is doing and start to crank, mm -hmm. you uh, and you are manually pointing your antenna. You need to keep in mind that the if the uh, the F15 or whatever is start to uh, doing beam or notch, you will lose the yeah. the contact in your scope because you are using high PRF. So you need to change immediately to medium PRF and make a look uh, as soon as possible. A hard look, a single uh, target uh, track. Right. Um, just following up on um, aiming the antenna, because I've seen you kill people about 15 miles or 10 miles away, and you've gone, the missile's in the air, your Fox 1's in the air, I'm certain I've been Fox 1's, and you've turned defensive nearly 90 degrees to the left or to the right, and your missile is still tracked and killed, killed the hostile. But there's no way your radar can be illuminating someone 90 degrees um, to the left or right. That's why that's why I made especially a, a barrel roll because I mean it involves a lot of things. There are there is something that I forgot. For example, in the vertical you have more angle than in the horizon. So if I'm keep uh, pulling the plane to the right or to, or to or to the left, cranking, I will lose more quickly the look. So mm -hmm. if I'm just start to roll the plane, so mm, my antenna will be pointing upper, Yeah, uh, that will give me more angle. Ah. Because in the flanker, 
in the vertical you have mu much more angle than in the horizontal. Right. I get it. That's an important note. I wish I had um, um, kind of a. You can make an experiment. For well, example. I was going to say I, w I wish I had a, a like a three D thing I could show on the screen. But 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 what it's saying is. Um, so if you look at a plan view, if I try and describe it, how it looks in my head, a plan view, and you turn the hostiles in front of you, and you turn your plane 90 degrees to the left, but so that uh, so your aeroplane is still flat, your radar will not be able to detect the hostile because the radar cannot turn right by 90 degrees. But if you stay in that 90 degrees and you now roll your aircraft, so you're still your vector is still 90 degrees to the hostile. Um, and your plane is now rolled 90 degrees right, so hostile is now in your lift vector, your radar can get him there, because the radar can pitch upwards uh, to 90 degrees or something, or, or uh, this may not be the exact degrees, but roughly speaking, up to 90 degrees. So that's how you get those those big kills, and that's an important thing, so maybe I'll have to do a graphic or something to show that, because that's... Uh, Mm. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you there, but yeah, that's an um, important point. In the flanker, you never know what is what are you facing because you will do something different against another flanker or a mirage or again uh, like in sorry i uh, or against an f15 or a plane that can fire you fox 3 so how you know uh, what are you facing well you will notice what are you facing just when the that shot uh what, when your enemy shoot an, a missile against you, um, how you know that? Just uh, what uh, watching or seeing your radar warning receiver that is called SPO15 in the flanker. All the people know that that ra radar warning receiver is pretty crap, mm -hmm. but it has something that is very useful, especially against F15. It has a, ra a ra uh, radar signal stray display that will tell you when the radar that is illuminating you is more close. Mm -hmm. And in particular, when um, Amram is pitbull and start to tracking you with his own radar, you will notice that that radar signal stray will start to increase and that will tell you when the missile is coming more close to you mm -hmm. uh, if you will receive a, for example if you will receive a look a hard look from a flanker or a mirage uh, that bar or that display will be and you are of course very close you it will be always in the maximum um, mm -hmm. you will do not appreciate uh, with exactitude when the, the missiles that are coming towards you uh, will be more close. Uh, that is um, quite important to because if you notice that it's an Amram that is coming towards you and you do not have the advantage, the evasive manu maneuver that you must to do is an speed lead S and bug out of there mm -hmm. and change your position and try to ambush uh, your your uh, your enemy. And so that's the use of that's the, so that's a tactical use of the Russian RWR. The SPO. Yes, hmm. mostly. Interesting. Cool. Okay. So that's something else because I must admit I hardly ever look at my RWR. Well, I don't at all when fighting, which is really bad. So mm, okay, fine. Um, I'll move on to the next question then. What also seems critical is that unlike the AI, 14 Aero cranked early before any missiles were in the air and when the range was l long. Yeah, so I, I went through this in my F-15 video and I'll just very quickly, I don't want to, you know, bog this down. So 14 Aero cranked a long time before the AI because 14 Aero is a human and he knows that he has to start cranking um, about, I usually say about 30 miles, which is way beyond the range of any missiles in, in DTS, the way it's set up. 30 to kind of 35 miles, start cranking, um, we do that so that we can reduce any effectiveness of um, a, a long-range missile that a hostile may fire. Um, I've explained it with pictures and stuff in a better video, so I won't go through it more. Uh, an AI won't do it. Uh, artificial intelligence isn't smart enough to really understand that. But a human knows to crank early, way before any missiles can potentially be fired, to get on a hard 40-plus degree crank. 
Um, so smart humans, anyway. Smart. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, 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 we've got quite a, an interesting group here. That we've got some good guys, some medium guys, and some shit guys. Because it's an open group, it's always going to be the same. And we can see the difference when we do the tactical debriefs. We see the good, experienced guys get on the hard crank, crank it for absolute limit, and when we see the noob guys just obviously fly right in and usually get shot. Um, and uh, it, it makes it as a, a good teaching tool. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. It's also useful when you're fighting somewhere like open conflicts or wherever in PvP, and you see someone just coming head on, doesn't care anything about cranking or notching. Mm -hmm. You kind of know that this person is yep. probably rather new, so you can kind of relax and talk calm about your own engagement. Yeah, well, half of the battle uh, on a public server. I mean, ours are a bit different. Our missions are almost all against AI, and so we know AI back to front. We know what they're like. Uh, but obviously, fighting humans, you never know what you're going to get. So the public server is cool like that. So um, half of the battle, I think, is judging what the hostile is like, um, what the hostile human is like. And just like you said, if you see them coming and not putting any crank on, or, or you see them, they're not full power or whatever, any of these small markers you can see, you can judge their skill level by that, compare it to yours, and um, then you can make a decision how you're going to approach that. Are you? Is it worth fighting this guy? Is it not worth fighting this guy? What kind of stress do you have to put yourself through to fight it? Are you going to have to go full, you know, full um, yeah. skill level, or is it going to be an easy uh, shoot and scoot? Um, so, yeah, for example, if you're flying something with a proper radar warning receiver, such as anything on the Western Front, uh, you can kind of see what the enemy is flying from their radar signature, mm -hmm. and if they are flying, let's say, an F-15, and they do a crank, and you're flying a plane you're not proficient with, you can kind of make the no uh, go no go decision quite yeah. easy and don't go against the target that will probably wipe you out yeah. but uh, if it's flying something completely different or if they're flying a better statistically better plane than you but they're very shit uh, you just go for it yeah and I've always always uh, said this and um, people tend to get kind of um, target fixation they see um, but the, the less experienced guys they, they see a hostile in the air and they've got to charge it and they've got to kill it they don't matter what it is they've got to do it and that kind yeah, of person always, always gets shot down yeah, or they see a plane that's better than theirs, and they just immediately run. Yeah, you've got a, a, a yeah, exactly. Choose your battles and um, decide when you want to fight. And uh, like I said in the previous video, if if there's maybe three hostiles in front of you and you're on your own, you know, you don't want to just charge into them, or you don't even want to do a tactical fight against that. What you want to do is um, skirt around the edge, uh, keep them in 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 vision, but so you're well out of. Um, any kind of attack range and just wait until one drops off or two of them drop off and makes it an easier fight and then go for the attack uh, so yeah, more, maybe, we'll do, maybe we'll do a proper video about PvP and how we do this kind of thing uh, another time but yeah clever fighting That's, it's because the, the people in general uh, don't care lose uh, his airplane because it's an earthquake a game so they will die and they will, they will take another plane and repeat yeah. I like try to keep my. I mean, I, I don't like lost my airplanes. So even if I have a very good engagement in front of me, but if I'm have risk to lose my airplane, well, I I will evade that engagement. I just like landing. So the only way you can practice landings and just go back home is if you survive the fight. So yeah, well, choose your fights, come about alive, and you get to do more with your plane. Everybody wins. Well, I, I agree with both, really. But I, I think it has more of a tactical advantage as, as well. What I've seen over the past few years, you know, we've been doing this fucking every day for the last two years, basically. And we've flown with, or certainly I've flown with different groups, and, and including some really top skill groups. Um, and I've seen the people that just run in and charge, which is a lot of people. Like, we've got our guy, a young guy, really high skill, but has the mentality of a child because he is a child obviously and so he will just charge in and that's all he'll ever do and never think to you know self-preservation where we're older and um we're a bit more scared of things um and so we want to save ourselves we don't want to die um now uh, that adds an extra skill to when you're doing uh, going up on the upper levels like when we used to practice with the fsf squadron which specialize in they're like the 104 they specialize in PvP and had to do that just hours every day, so they're you know extremely extremely good. And the guys um, like me that um, concentrate on self-preservation and avoiding uh, any kind of fight that they didn't think they could win, um, it really paid off in those those big high skill fights because um, a lot of that 
um, training on evasion and staying alive um, was almost as important as the actual kind of assertive uh, offensive fighting. So I think it's something that is overlooked and I think that guys that just charge in constantly have three lives and then quit and play another game don't really, Im you know, they're not improving their skill by doing that because they're missing out on the whole tactical idea of self-preservation which is what, you know, a real pilot would be taught and what seems in the long run to be extremely tactically useful, I think. Anyway, let's crack on. So, discuss that. So, here, the next paragraph is just basically saying why the AO was shit because it just reacts and doesn't isn't proactive anyway. And that's exactly right. It's just driven by a bunch of subroutines that just say, if this happens in front of me, do this. Then, if that happens in front of me, do this. Uh, so, it is uh, predictable um, and it's easy to beat. It's not like a human. Actually, I always say the AI set to maximum skill level is a bit like a medium to good-ish type human. He can fly, he knows his uh, flight parameters well, he knows his uh, aeroplane well, but he can't make on-the-fly on the decisions, um, if you know what I mean, tactical decisions, and now AI never will really be able to, unless it's proper AI, and it's, it's not, obviously, it's just a game. Um, so anyway, there's nothing really to learn there, but yep, they're just reinforcing that factor. Move next one. Um, actually, I'll take back what I said. What I meant was to say, at long range, i.e. 40 plus miles, they are kind of predictable and uh, relatively easy to beat within reason. I still fucking died to Fox threes from from for them all the time, and so it's not that easy. Yeah, that's but, but but in close range, in close range, when you're getting in um, Fox uh, Fox two short range or guns are actually pretty menacing um, because uh, reactive just works then, and knowing you're playing well, which they do obviously, works really well. Yeah, and they never lose track of you. And that's plus for them. Yeah, yeah, obviously. That, yeah. Especially Literally, when yeah. they are aware of you. Uh, yeah. they, they react to radar signals at long range. Long range and when, when they are in the visual range, they know everything. Yeah. And they know how, where, where you are. In the video that I made for you, in fact, I can see when they sh shoot miss a uh, missile at me, then that is because I just cancel the crank and start to bleed the uh, M uh, AI and missile energy, mm -hmm. and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's fine. they are very predi predictable. It's, it's not good. Okay, right. okay. With uh, I'm going to read the next one. With the uh, flanker AI, first missile that was a long uh, an ET missile. It could not be seen. Something, something. The AI is not capable of spotting a smoke trail, so if the roles were reversed, it would be absolutely blind. That's not true. The AI can spot smoke trails. In fact, they they are annoyingly good at spotting smoke trails because obviously they're just a computer. They don't have to spot it. They just know it's there. Um, a human has to spot smoke trail as well. That's one thing we look for, as well as listening to our RWR for missile launch um, beeping. We also look for smoke trails, don't we? because that's another way of knowing if an ET, uh, yeah. if an IR missile, and then there's just part of fighting. You have to be constantly looking at something I'm really shit at. Looking out your, uh, mon uh, you know, fucking whatever, your window, looking out for the smoke trails, because that's... And that's something that comes to bite some people when they just focus on the radar warning receiver. Mm -hmm. They just completely forget what's going on outside. So if you're flying something old tech, say MiG-21, it's relatively invisible to newish people who don't look out the window. Yep. It's, it doesn't make any kind of indication that it's there, if you've got the radar off, that is. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How, I mean, I, I'm guilty of when I was, used to fly the F-15 all the time, my entire fucking fight, even up to, in, into, into beyond BVR, or I, you know what I mean, into visual range, was looking at my gauges, because that's how I'd fight the entire fight. And that was great until a flanker flew at me with its radar off and just shot me easily with an e with a IR missile. So that's just a horrible mix of constantly in a modern BVR fighter looking up around the cockpit, looking down into the instruments, up into the cockpit, down into the instruments, um, which is quite refreshing flying an F5 or a MiG-21 or something when you're literally just looking out the window like driving a car. Well, yeah, driving a car but not looking at your gauges. Because oh, there is another thing that I remember. I don't know if you... Uh us for that, that or you would you remember that where I was doing a crank in the flanker mm. uh, or not I no 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 it's not a crank when I just fa I was facing the the AI uh, flanker and um, well the the mode in the radar in the radar or in the HUD changed to 
איך הוא נזכר לזה? to RL, to uh, EORL, and you wonder what that means. Oh yeah. Remember? Mm-hmm. Well, when you are in EO, I mean, the, that change automatically. Mm-hmm. You are in a hard loop and single uh, target track. Um, you have radar look. But when the systems change to a EORL, that's because you lose, I mean, the target being your radar. Ah, not. So the systems uh, change to his backup that is using the EO to, to keep the track, to keep pointing the antenna that the antenna don't see. I mean, the, 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 you rather can't see anymore, uh, can't receive any anything from the, that hostile, but the systems will keep tracking with the EO, uh, keep pointing your antenna in that direction until uh, you will have a launch at authorization again. But you have two things to do that could do when you um, when you have a uh, rather look again and auto, uh, your autorisa- auto launch authorization start to blink. That one is just hit your trigger once, you will receive a full launch authorization and you can hit the trigger again and lo- launch your, whip- your weapon. Or you can turn off the EO system and you will receive a launch authorization immediately so you can release your, whip- your weapon. I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that when it lost lost optimum radar lock, I didn't, didn't know that it switched to electrical optical. That's interesting. For example, that is a, a feature that has the, the flanker. If you are in the same situation uh, using in Amiras, use, using, for example, track wide scan, the, the first look, and you lose the, the, the contact in your scope, you, you lose the lock. Uh, that's because you was using the track wide scan, scan with um, uh, it's a, a higher radar frequency, mm. you forget to change to medium radar frequency and you lose the lock and you need to point, uh, that's because the, the target is beaming or something like that, and you need to reacquire manually in the Mirage the 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 look pointing again you are your antenna and in that direction and so it's more even more tricky yeah it's I think even know perfectly what i'm trying to say yes i'm well aware of this and one of the things that makes the mirage radar a little inferior i've i'm not i haven't flown it in a while i'm not sure if it's been fixed but the radar would not have any memory of the location of the target so once you lose it mm. it's gone for good and you need to require it completely the radar doesn't even know where to look that's the annoying thing it doesn't it because it's just it's just set it to neutral again and you fucked at that yeah point. Because when it's so close, especially if hostiles close, you've got a huge. Especially scope when you are close, especially yeah, when you're close, yeah. Badly. So that's a but, useful thing on the EO then, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely working for the flanker, but for the Mirage, the close quarters battle modes they seem to work quite well. Mm-hmm. So if that was an F-15, I was in an F-15, and my target beamed at uh, notched at I don't know 11 miles or something. That's it. I'll just lose it. There's no way I can get it back because I don't have any backup at that point until I can try and reacquire it again in the future. I think the F-15 radar has kind of a memory system in it. God, I don't know. I could Maybe. be wrong. It's not my main. It does. Plane. It does stay. So if it's tracking something and it loses a track, it will stay at that the antenna. Yeah, exactly. It will stay at that orientation. Not that the actual dish moves per se, as far as I'm aware, but it will stay looking at that point. So that's good at least. And it will pick, yeah. and then as soon as you know the plane is an as- the hostile is an aspect where it can be seen again, it will just ping back up again. So that's good. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That functionality does not exist in the Mirage as mm. of yet. Interesting. Okay, fine. Um, right, quickly f- uh, finish through this. So it's important, blah blah blah. So it's just guys just talking about the AI. That's fine. We're not really interested in the AI, the AI though. We just use it as a you know an, an example. Uh, as you pointed out, 14 first fired his missile. Fox one when the odds were against it. 
Um, obviously, that was a long shot. Must have been a 15 mile shot or something. The point of this was to unclear. Yeah, so it's just a tactical move. You, you'd like to put a fox run out quite early, don't you, Fortinero? Um, to pressurise uh, pressurise the hostile, especially if they're uh, a more newer um, uh, player. They, they, you're going to pressurise them to put themselves in a vulnerable position. They're going to lose speed. They're going to lose, you know, lose posture, aren't they? Uh, uh, and, unless they're an experienced player and they know that that fox couldn't hit them. Um, then it's a good move to do to send out a, a long range missile um, so to begin yes, with. It's, it's like a psychological test. So, yeah, so, yeah. so that, is, that, that actually, that actually we, works very well with yeah. the Mirage, at least used to, because you only have two radar missiles. And generally, people think that if you fire, you have a good solution. Mm, yeah. But if you just play with their psyche for a bit and fire off just a shot to force them defensive, I've had many kills with that. Yeah, I mean, I like to describe it as um, two kind of um, two guys. I, I always use the word posturing. You know how two guys, when they're drunk, kind of posture up to each other, and it's most of, most of it's bullshit. You know, trying to see who's you know before before they start swinging punches. They, one guy tries to get in the other guy's face, trying to get the other guy to back down, and, and it's kind of like that in a way. You're kind of uh, out psyching your 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 opponent. And um, it only comes unstuck when you're facing a really good hostile who knows all of his numbers, you know, all of his ranges in his head. He knows he, that you, you can't hit him if he does a certain type of crank or something. Uh, but otherwise, it's a good way of psyching out your, your, um, your opponent. Um, a couple of curious things Fortinero did can be explained with a little thought. As you have pointed out in the other videos, he has a habit of following a Fox 1 with a Fox 2. Yeah, I noticed that. It's very annoying. I suspect his shift to the plane's IR seeker against the other flanker may be a routine prep for this little trick. Further, his habit of breaking right is probably because an extreme right shift of the stick is easy to do because your body isn't in with your right arm. It is a fairly automatic habit of Fortinero's part. I'd rather anyway. Okay, fine. Uh, there can uh, you, th there is no reason why you crank right all the time, is there? For no, it's just no, habit. No. In, in your mission, is because your the sun was in the, oh, okay. the left. Well, the, 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 the right side. There is so when, if I crank to the left, the the glare in my head down display just bothered me. That's well, there's another. That's another good. Sun lesson. is a tactical element. So, uh, sun is tactical. Yeah, it's very tactical. So I've never even thought about that. But when you're choosing your crank, as well as um, picking hostiles. Another thing. It's, I, I never do the same with the with the flanker. At some time, I just fire an ET behind, um, just be, behind an ER, or sometimes sometimes I just uh, they do another trick, like just hard look and get close, fire an ET. He will expect that I fire an ER and uh, and just uh, re receive a warning of launch. And then uh, immediately that I fire the the ET, the ET I start to fly and doing silly things, just get away and just to confuse uh, the, the the my enemy that is in front of me because uh, from a long range maybe he can't see the launch of the ET, so he would, uh, he will lose for example uh, the the alert of a look, he will do not receive, of course, a, any warning of launch. Mm -hmm. I, he will see me doing for that evasive maneuver because he's looking at me and I, it's all about trick and cheat and mm -hmm. in, well, in the flank. It's, it's not like in the F-15. The F-15 is, is more technical. Yeah. The flanker, you need a lot of tricks and because you only have Fox 1 and you, you, you can't use the Air 77. In here in the yeah. CS, in real life, so you need to do a lot of yeah. tricks. I mean, it worked. I mean, I'd never, I'd never been taught before to look out for a fox two hidden by a fox one, and just to know it, it is pretty much invisible that fox two because the fox one has a smoke trail of its own, and it will hide the smoke trail of the fox two behind it in its own smoke trail. So mm -hmm. it's a really hard thing to dodge. That is. Um, so I guess the best thing is for an F fifteen pilot or whatever, just assume it's there. Assume there's an ET there and um, act accordingly with your uh, putting your thrusters in the right way and flaring and whatnot. So that's something I've learned anyway. Yeah, same here. I've been shot down by a trick similar to this a couple of times. So that's kind of taught me that when I'm facing flankers or MiG 29s, just uh, pop flare and chaff because you don't know which one it is.
Yeah, um, I mean, I was always taught uh, by the SF guys only use the particular um, countermeasure as relevant to the um, uh, threat. The reason is you don't want to flare out at night, for instance, and make yourself in make yourself oh, super visible. Yeah. Well, but even yeah, but there might be an ET at night time. So to be honest, from this, I just I just send all my countermeasures out now and be safe. That you know, rather than get shot down by a cheeky ET, which could have come out from an AI as well, an AI could have fired an ET as well. Uh, behind well, to, a, be, to be honest, uh, that is effective when you are long. I, I mean, yeah, the launch is, is very long because the R27, the airframe of that missile, is very bad. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no. uh, the, the track system is, is bad in the ET and in the AR. AR um, it, it's very it's, it's easy to outmaneuver at distance, especially when the missile lost his fuel. Um, but uh, if you, um, for example, if you are at close and someone fire an ET uh, or an R-77 and you are uh, not trying to notch the ER, well, uh, um, you can pop a lot of flag, but the, the ET or the R-73 will track anyways yeah. to you. So if you, the, the most important, as always, is keep the situation awareness. I mean, it's, it's okay to look at your instruments, but just look outside, try to to, to see the what is doing the, the your contact, your enemy. Um, if you will see more more missiles coming towards you, um, even if you have, I mean, an, an, uh, an alert or a alarm telling you that an ER um, semi-active missile is coming towards you, um, you sh the best that you can do uh, is go get away as fast as you can. Or if you are pretty sure that uh, IRs are coming towards you, just face uh, towards your nose, towards mm -hmm. the uh, IR put your engine and start to uh, deploy flares, doing barrel rolls or whatever. Uh, that is pretty Rega effective against IR. Yeah. Regarding uh, countermeasure usage, there's a sign of a bad pilot, and that is if he's still got countermeasures that he could have used when he died. That's a good point. Guilty. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's going, it's like the fuel as well. Like I always say, if you're going to fight, you're in a serious fight, you will use maximum power of your engines when they should be used um, a lot of people like uh, some of the other guys we've got here just want to save fuel all the way up to the last moment you know un until they're firing missiles and it's like no you'll just cut your fighting ability by 30% there because you haven't used your afterburners you've got to use I'm that sort of fuel guilty up. in this it with the MiG-21 I try to preserve the engine too much Roger I don't know any anything about I, I'm, yeah I don't know anything about uh, that particular plane but yeah, the MiG-21, you can flame out the engine if you after burn more than three minutes, I think. Mm. So I'm overly cautious with that, and that's something I need to work on personally. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of, a, I don't know, it's almost an unnatural thing to do, because obviously like, we're talking about self-preservation there, you want to have fuel so that you can get back. You know you need that fuel so you can get back to land, but at the same time, you know if you're going into a one-on-one fight, one -on -one fight with a hu human, You've got to have every single thing in your favour, even the fucking wind and sun, if like we were discussing earlier, if you can. So to not be using your your burners or ab absolute full optimization is um, putting yourself in a lot of trouble. Obviously, uh, just to make you know, you don't use these tactics when you're fighting a fucking unarmed E3 sentry or something. It's only when you're against. I think I've discussed this already. When you're against uh, what you've determined to be a uh, a worthy adversary as such, uh, think something can shoot you down easily. But anyway. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, just a comment here about practicing on the AI. Yep, do that. Uh, practice these things that we're trying to teach on the AI and then ramp their uh, skill level up slowly until you can beat them on the hardest level and then start all over again on humans, basically, because humans are a completely different matter, but uh, they're harder to simulate for us. Finally, as you mentioned several times, optimum distances for, f for various missiles, 2 miles Sidewinder, 10 miles AMRAM, and so on. I think an in-depth examination, yeah, it's a real tough one to do because um, 
Ah, it's it's so I can quickly reel it off because I've got everything memorised in an F in an F fifteen quickly. Head on at Angels twenty. It's ten miles for the Amram shot. Fourteen miles Angels forty. It is seven miles on the deck, and you can in, uh, play that back and you interpolate those miles in between them for the sidewinder. I don't know because I don't use sidewinder, so I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't know. Someone else will have to tell me that. Uh, two miles for sidewinder is when they're cold. I do know that. Four miles for an Amram is when they're cold and uh, i.e. heading away at full burn um, with those things that I've learned there I can do pretty much any fight with the F-15 I'm guilty of not using my sidewinders properly um, I only use them when hostile is burning away from me uh, but it's, it's worked so far okay um, right I don't have any more range information because that's all I fly basically right so we've got to the end of that um, so what I'm going to do uh, should we try if we've got time we'll try running through a couple of the tack views together shall we and see if that works this is uh, a couple of fights by I'm fucking get this to work uh, Fortinero um, in his flanker Angels 20 our usual setup 50 miles away from George Clooney there in an F-15C I think it's a Fox 1 only fight so there'll be no Fox 3s uh, let's go full let's set that playing go full screen just to very quickly explain to you guys this number on the left tag here is uh, uh, altitude so that's 20,000 feet there that on the right I think is indicated airspeed so that's 560 knots and in I, th I think that's right am I wrong that's true airspeed sorry that's true airspeed um, and for and here's the more I always get these wrong so someone will correct me I'm sure and here's the um, the fuller data well, just so we've got four dinero is cranking to the. There's an AIM 9P. I don't know why that's there. I think that's just a dead missile. So what I can say is they're at 30 miles, and just on cue, four dinero is cranking a lovely 40 degrees plus to the right, a max speed 710 um, uh, knots, extremely fast. You can see the squiddle is uh, George Clooney is not cranking at all, so he must be a noob. He's going fast. He's going much faster because he's got an F-15, and he can. Um, uh, no, 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 no. He's cranking. You will notice the angle. Are you sure? That's not much of a crank. It, it, it's blindly a crank. Yeah, but uh, what's the point of he, cranking at five degrees? Look at that. I mean, he know he he knows how to how to crank, but okay, the fine. thing that he's he's uh, using now Fox One. Fox One at 16 miles, and at the same time you put a Fox One out and a hidden Fox Two killer in there. He has um, got the receive. He's received the warning. He's gone into downward evasive maneuver. So have you at the same time. So you're matching each other basically. You've done enough. You've burnt that missile right down. But he hasn't burnt your missiles down. They're still above a thousand knots. He's put another one out. Ready to load. He's ditched your missiles. You've put another salvo in of ER followed by ET. Very high energy. Look how fast yours are compared to his speed. And that's just got him. They're too high energy. And that's a point to, to remark. For example, pause yep. that in. Why uh, my missiles have more energy than the Squirtle? That's because the F-15 do not have any limitation with the flyby wire. You pull hard, hard your stick. You will do a very nice hard she maneuver, but you will lose a lot of speed. So with the flanker, you can't um, pull, I mean, just de 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 disable your flyby wire and pull hard she maneuvers because you will broke your wing. So uh, the the maneuvers that let you do it are very smooth, high she, but very smooth. Mm -hmm. So why I keep better the energy? A very good F-15 uh, pilot will try to maintain, do not do hard she maneuvers. I mean, do not pull too much the mm -hmm. stick mm -hmm. because the F-15 allow you to do that. They, re uh, so they rely on their the fly-by wire yes. too much then. Yes, so that's why my missiles have more oh. energy and not the square tools. Okay. No. Those same 11s were fired way too far yes, anyway. It's, it's easy in the F-15 if you have not too much experience, just lose all your energy, energy doing a maneuver. Yeah, and... Um, because the F-15 is far superior uh, to the flanker in that aspect. I mean, it's an, it's an purely energy fighter. So you need to, I mean, you have to keep that energy sometimes. Sometimes it's very good to to bleed the missile uh, kinetic energy uh, and do a, a defeat the missile. 
but sometimes like the mostly you you I think you you need to keep your energy up in the F15. I think. I'm just trying to see what your your speeds were when you shot your second salvo. I mean, you were both the same speed when you set your shot your second salvo. But his would just shit for some reason. I think he would, he turned as he was firing them or something. So you, you're yeah. both at six sixty knots. You're both like perfectly matched. But 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 his he, he's just his just scrubbed off right away. While yours kept their kept their speed up really really high. Look, you're over two thousand knots on that one. He's down to one thousand four hundred already. I mean, that's a huge difference. So he must have fired uh, them wrong. He must have fired them wrong. I can't see because of the screen, but um, was he firing them from a steep turn? So I'm just trying to look now. So, uh, so let's go and have a look. Oh god, he's a bit all over the place to be honest. Um, so back up a tiny bit. To be honest, this looks pretty optimal. You know, he's he's coming in. Um, let me run that through. No, he's coming in. Uh, a straight vector, a left degree bank, thirty degrees. Sent it off. And it's just slow as fuck. It's um, it's gone up to fourteen hundred knots and then just stops there. Uh, it slows down. Whereas, uh, so both did pretty well to be honest. And fourteen arrows, maybe it's a difference in the missile. Went up to two thousand. There was just never any. I don't know what there is to learn there. Aim sevens a shit maybe. I don't know. Just the missile well, did definitely not am It never got up to speed. Whereas just now, um, the ERs from the Russian main got below fourteen hundred. So. There was um, anyway. Well, one thing is the um, the R twenty that R twenty seven are the same crap that the I M seven, but it has more range. Mm -hmm. uh, even has a little more range than the Amrams in the game. In the game, in fact, in the game they are modeled the Amrams and the R twenty seven have less range than in real life. Roger. Why? It's very short. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, I discussed this in one of my videos. The the range of the missiles in DCS aren't quite accurate to real life. Um, I would think what they've probably done is tried to balance things out, so things balance to make it more of a game. So it, you know, it annoys a lot of the purists, including us. But that's how it is. Right, you ready to run through fight two? So pressing play, same deal. Uh, Fifty miles from each other. They both got their burners on. Going to pick up speed immediately. George Clooney's miles faster because his aeroplane is. Mm -hmm. Stomped his tanks and wait, well, look how fast that fucking thing is. It's ridiculous. I noticed that George Clooney goes down slightly to pick up speed, whereas Fortune Arrow goes up slightly. I don't know if there's any advantage there. I mean, in reality, um, uh, who was it? Jabbers or another one of our um, fellow um, video makers did a, a video, uh, an F-15 video with a real F-15 pilot, and 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 that real F-15 pilot says go higher than the hostile, so you got so you can effectively do a long bomb. You can shoot f further if you go higher than them. Uh, that doesn't translate down to DCS because of the change, the 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 change in missile modelling that they've done that we talked about a few seconds ago. Going higher doesn't seem to help at all. If anything, it seems to um, gives you a deficit. So just due to DCS, how it's slightly modified from real life. Um, otherwise, you know, oh, well, saying that, F-15 is going high this time, don't know why, but I reckon it probably won't work in his favour, because we've had plenty well, of... Well, in fact, the going high lets you have a more range. But, 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 it, it, what makes... The, but you can't dodge, though, you, you can't what? dodge. Yeah, that's the problem, you don't want high, I mean, make a launch to... That's exactly, so long. that's exactly right. The, so this, just to reiterate, so the real F-15 pilot, and obviously he's right in real life, but this isn't real life, says go high, go up to Angels 40, 50 or something and long bomb missiles in. That's great. It doesn't work in DCS because if you fire a missile at 40 miles in DCS, Fortinero can easily dodge it. You know, it's got zero chance of hitting. Now the problem is when you're up there, like look at this guy at 35,000 feet, 40,000 feet, there's no air up there. That F-15 can't manoeuvre up there in real life or in DCS. So Fortinero can put a missile firing up there and missiles love to go up high. They work better the higher they go. An aeroplane works worse and worse and worse. So it just makes you a sitting duck every time I've tried to go up high. And everyone's always told me, don't go up high, don't fight high. In DCS, you'll get shot down. So that's an important to learn. Important thing to learn. Yes, in real life, that's probably wrong. Maybe I don't know. In DCS, definitely don't go up high. And hopefully, we'll see that in practice here. We've got high uh, George Clooney here and Angels 20, which I say is perfect for uh, Rivals Middle. Angels 20 is the perfect 
optimum height for fighting. You've got a mixture between uh, missile range and aircraft engine ability, which depends on your height, and uh, airfoil uh, efficiency, so how hard you can turn, basically. So let's see that. So 24 miles, you've got your crank on, just like you're supposed to. Squiddle's high and slow, it's completely pointless, I don't know why he's doing it. And he's got no crank on at all, so I don't think he can crank at all, look, he just kind of waddles towards you. Uh, one thing about going high is that you kind of bank energy into yeah. potential energy, so you can use that when you're going down. Oh, yeah, I said that wrong. What I was always taught is go to Angels 40 and uh, then dive down so that you time it, so when you fire your first missile, it's your Angels 20. Um, the only thing is, doing that when all the other stresses of combat, I find it so hard to do, I don't do it. But yes, that is technically what I've been taught. Go up high, dive down, so that when you're 10 miles away, you're Angels 20. You'll probably find, like me, you'll just get lazy after a while, because it's so hard to concentrate, you'll just stick at Angels 20 like 14 arrows doing. Anyway, they're at 15 miles, they're at missile fighting range. Let's see who fires, uh, Fort Nero fires first, and I reckon Fort Nero will win this, because look how he's a sitting duck up there at Angels 35. Let's look at the missile speeds, Fort Nero's ERs are well over 2,000 knots. Yeah, the AM7s are, no, yeah, it's a, it's a deficiency in the AM7, maybe. It's right, it was started off, it never got higher than 1,400. Both are doing their diving rolls, which we've discussed. It's got to lose height to beat a missile and change vector and aspect. And in for, uh, George Clooney's hardly scrubbing any energy off these missiles. Oh, he's stalled. He's stalled it. Look, 20, 2600 knots. I know that's not airspeed, but he's effective. Look how slow he is compared to Fortunero. Uh, George is, uh, we went down to. 200 knots. Fortunero has never been below 500 knots. And his missiles are not even halfway yet, and you know, this is a one way battle for sure. It's completely on the back foot. He sent another M7 out, but there's no way I don't think he can maintain him in his cone. He's had to turn completely cold. And splodge. Yep. One way fight, don't fight up high, it's stupid. And look at that, 14 arrow. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a deficit. These AIM 7s simply aren't as good as the ERs. But we're showing, every, again, we're showing everything we've got to do here. We're showing the cranking, we're showing um, how he's firing missiles, how he's diving down and turning, and then re engaging when he's decided that he's beating the missile. Uh, we'll watch one more through, and then I think that will do it. About this fight, um, if I remember correctly, the AIM 7 really does not have as much range as the uh, AMRAM. And he's firing them off as if they were AMRAMs with radar guidance. Yeah, from the he plane. is, isn't he? And that's that's a big issue because the acceleration pretty much dies out immediately for the AIM-7s. Yeah, yeah. They're I don't know if they're that bad in real life, but they're modelled certainly modelled really badly. I mean, they were six, six, seven hundred knots down on terminal velocity. Right, this time Squirtle's going to try his luck going down. He's on the deck again um an f15 on the deck is in my experience death sentence it's not designed to be down on the deck it's designed to be at angels 20. um that's what i think um uh, you are relatively safe down there because a missile hates being down low so fort nero will have to get within kind of seven miles to kill him down there adversely he's just got no energy to play with squirtle down there on the deck at 400 knots if he wants to start turning, he's just got no energy in the bank. No, uh, was it potential or kinetic? I can't remember. But he's got, he's got. No I think that in particular is not a good fight because Squirtle just, uh, just spam all his M7. Okay, we're playing another one through. Um, we're not sure what's going to happen, so let's just see what happens. So, so George has got a lovely crank on. Look at that. He's finally, learned his lesson. And Fortunero sees the crank. Oh. There is a particularity that maybe you can you want to show. Where do you want me For to example, go? For uh, example, I shot down his own missile. His nah. uh, IR. Uh, Squiddle's on the deck here, uh, so he's hiding in the mountains. Um, obviously, yeah, this is a great tactic to do, but it's not something we can really cover because it's so multifaceted. Um, but we'll run it through anyway. Fortuner is just doing the usual, you know, coming straight on uh, a normal head-on fight. George is hiding in the mountains, and let's see what happens. I'll probably skip it forward because they're going to be going quite slow for this one. So I'll just skip it forward a bit. So they're going to wait until they make some sort of contact. Ah, right. 
And you can use the middle mouse button. Roger, and move it your now. Mouse Roger. To so George is coming out of the canyons now. He's decided to make his attack. Uh, they're 14, uh, 14 miles away from each other. Uh, 14 arrows, energy high, burners on. George is fairly energy low, really. Ah, he's fired. No, he hasn't fired. So 14 arrows, they've both fired missiles at each other. Fox 1s, I guess. It's just a straight on, and we've got a hidden ET in there as well. George is doing his usual um, calamities, dodging. So when they've decided they've beaten the missiles, they're going to roll back into a head on vector again. 14 arrows made it first. 14 arrows had a much, uh, much more aggressive fight there. He's back on vector already. Fortuner is losing lots of altitude. He's right down in the mud now. In fact, they're both down in the mud, heading towards each other nine miles away. It's going to be a funny old fight, this is. Eight miles. And they're both waiting. Seven miles. Both at Something to point out is um, it's not a random missile spamming. Every missile has a purpose. It's yeah. either force defensive or mask another kill shot. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pause it there. There's another thing. Um, yeah, as, as what I was always taught, so you never. Um, so it's quite t tempting to just unload your missiles on a hostile and just hope for the best and run away. Um, that's just bad fighting in, in every way. Um, yeah, so for example, when you fire off, say you've got an F 15 belly full of AIM 7s and you fire off all four of them as soon as you get in range. Uh, all the missiles will behave kind of similarly. So if you can defeat one, you'll defeat all of them. Uh, so oh, you want to yeah. space out the launchers. Yep. What's and besides, if you launch a missile far, far away range and fire it off, and you keep moving in the same vector, you'll actually have more range. Uh, sorry, you'll shoot. Uh, second missile you shoot will actually hit first because mm -hmm. you've got more energy on it from your own plane, and it's going to burn for, uh, forward. Yeah, well, that that's sense. actually mm -hmm. uh, happened yesterday when I was uh, practicing with Signor and he's. He spammed all his hand run Can't to do my that. flanker. Uh, so I, I perfectly visual, I have visual of all of that. I'm just split this, turn around, and, and re engage. I defeat all the missiles because if you defeat one, you will defeat all the missiles that are behind the, the first one. So this yeah. is not, it makes exactly. no sense. This makes no sense at all. Yep, and I remember back you in the. Uh, maybe do something like ripple fire with the with the arm mm. Yeah, you or space them out. Like, I wouldn't even say that, spacing, guys. Spacing. I, I wouldn't even say that. I I, I think uh, Coffee's first sentence was it was the first one. Every missile has to have a purpose. So ripple firing missiles doesn't really have a purpose. I mean, if you've got one missile, if you on space the them out with with a couple, let's say, 10, 12, 20 second intervals, you'll have they will behave differently so you can't mm. do one action and expect it to defeat both missiles so you kind of keep forcing the opponent defensive and well, what do you know you might hit and kill maybe i'm too limited in my too linear in my thinking but what i was taught is to to do to i only fight with the f-15 i come in i fire my one missile at my predetermined say 10 mile um thing uh, uh trajectory then i do my predetermined move which is a split s down and then back into combat and then as soon as i've acquired lock and i'm, I'm within uh, I'll, I'll fire one more missile again i'll never ripple any more missiles one missile is all i'll ever have until phase yeah, three and then phase three which is the next phase of the combat assault one missile only um and yes so that works with amrans because you can afford to go out but in a fox one fight you're always going to be pointing at your opponent and you can fire them off yeah that's interesting. Well, that, that's in particular. For example, uh, that's, that, like I said uh, yesterday, just was practicing and doing doing everything, of everything silly things or whatever with Signore. Uh, was a very good example that Ambrose. But, but Signore just follow perfectly your technique, and it's very very challenging yep. a fight with that against that technique. So. In all the process, I develop my own counter mm -hmm. technique to that uh, yesterday, uh, because I mean, uh, in one sortie, Signori takes me down, and in the other sortie, I just do some uh, some trick, and well, I shoot down him, and was very pale. Uh, 
um, well, that's the difference. For example, then sh we should start to do silly things, and Signori spams all your mm -hmm. arm ramps, and that was a very, very good example when yeah, I was talking with him that why the people do, uh, must not do that because because that mm. because you defeat one you defeat all the and, uh, missiles it's another thing like you're you're trying to override your urge your urge is to just fucking like having a machine gun it's just to hold your finger down on the trigger and get rid of all your bullets yes. because that's the urge exactly and, and, and again when you've got a missile being fired at you your urge is to turn around and get the fuck out of there your urge is not to run into the missile and barrel roll and, you know so you are everything you're doing is overcoming you know your all of your natural um desires and that's obviously what makes you into a good fighter in the end once it's yeah. employed correctly yeah i just want to say cap your technique you go in you fire off one from your crank and well as per maneuver and you go defensive you require target then you fire again if need be that works perfectly with amrams like i said or mm. fox threes for that matter mm. but this kind of method only works for fox ones where you're always pointing towards the enemy more or less roger so it's almost like a joust because you, you're not turning away. You're always in yeah. each other's cone, aren't you? So you're always, always in each other's danger, which is why I don't want to fucking do it. I hate the idea of doing it. <laughs> um, right, anyway, let's see this through and then we'll, we'll terminate with any uh, parting comments. Stand by. We're off again. So they're getting close. They're five miles now. We've got an ET. So let's see if um, George sees... Oh, look, fucking... Yep. Yeah. Right, one back. Now that was interesting. Um, hang on, stand by. I've just got to get this right. Uh, pause back up so what we have there is Fortinero uh, spotting um so how you do this because it's a smokeless missile aim seven isn't it or no i I, that range. I was of course always in, in eo and at that time with vertical scan so i i keep in scanning with the vertical scan i'm keeping an edge i think i don't remember uh, how tally of that little dot so i feel yeah. oh this is quartal, so uh, I point my vertical scan over there and get a look with the EO because mm -hmm. the, the missile is hot. And uh, just made my launch. Um, that's all. That's all. I mean, oh, I yeah. saw that I was shot down squirtal, in fact, but. Oh, I see. I mean, um, yeah, I, I've. I mean, this is actually this is actually a genuine tactic. I mean, in this case, um, I don't think it was a, a genuine. Uh, I don't think Fortinero felt a threat from that missile, or, or certainly in reality, he wasn't really under any threat. He could have easily have dodged it. You saw it was energy low, but it shows that you can acquire, uh, and you can do this in the fifteen. I've seen this in the fifteen as well. You can shoot down hostile missiles, and it can be bloody useful, usually in within visual range. Well, I guess you are within range, aren't you? You're five miles away. So this, uh, I used to fight when I was in the fifty ninth. I used to uh, fight some of the guys that down there uh, doing IR missile practice, so within 10 miles. And I would launch, I'd salvo a couple of far sidewinders at him, and he would actually shoot them down with his Mirage and then gun me or something. And it, it, so it can be useful. I've never done it before. It looks extremely difficult to me. So you, so it's picking it up, is it? The um, Your vertical scan's picking it up. Yeah. All right, so it does it all for you then, basically. God knows how it, you know, sees such a small cross section. But, but I remember at first have a tally, I mean, have visually a confirmation yeah. of that dot. So I point my vertical scan towards that. Uh, that. Yeah. That's why I, why I just make a lot of emphasis in to keep your eyes, uh, I mean, uh, outside your yeah. cop copy always. Yeah. For okay. example, you, you ten your technique. Uh, that do the split S, fight the Amram at 10 miles. It's very good, but, but you need to add, uh, I mean, the, you need to perfectly to try to to see where is the enemy. Because yeah. if yesterday I do exactly the same. Well, when I saw um, Signori fire that Amram at 10 miles, I, I just do the same. Uh, split S, I hit the deck, turn around, with all my EO, I ambush him from the, his flank because he w was uh, uh, turning, keeping his energy to re-engage and do the same. So I, I, go, I engage, I am um, ambush him. Oh, um, if Fignori was, uh, I mean, if Fignori uh, could have um, a visual on me or, or at least keep his situation awareness, uh, well, I maybe he can or could remain his situation awareness and know where I, where I am etc etc yeah that's one thing I do I never look out the window and I need to because when you are too close the the, 
the radar is i mean you you will have, uh, have a hard time ta trying to this get a uh, radar lock yeah. or find the other so that's that's uh, i mean it's a good example on, on why i lost one of the other days when it was me against 40 mm -hmm. i'd lost because yes. we'd so we'd done our first engagement then we we're on to stage two and i just couldn't get him in my radar cone that's because as we discussed before a radar cone as i call it is um it's quite a narrow beam really i've got to point it at him to get him to find him so it's much better if i would have been looking out the window with my eyes um, all the time so I knew where he was then I can pre-aim my radar cone where I know he is and then I can get the lock so that's something mm -hmm. um, so it's important to split your time between you know your your radar screens and your outside in fact I would imagine real F-15 pilots I imagine would, would probably have something like 80% canopy time 20% uh, radar time or something like that when in you know we're getting getting nearby I, I don't know but um, maybe that's cool all right, let's see this one. Ideally, you mainly look out and occasionally glance at your radar if you see anything new mm. in there in your peripheral vision. Mm. Yeah, I'm guilty of just fucking eye, eye hawks on that radar screen and just use kind of peripheral vision to the to the uh, uh, canopy, but they should be the other way around. Uh, I don't know if we're going to learn anything here because it's silly now they're next to each other, but it's got an AIM-7 that's just hit the ground and... They're just flying towards each other at four miles. Aim seven out. See, uh, yep. Yeah, see, oh, sorry. Aim nine. Aim nine. Much nicer missile. And Fortinero has dodged it. I don't know how. He didn't put any flares out. It just dodged. So, no idea. And there's not seventy-three, which is a completely unbeatable missile. And there's nothing he can do after that. Pow and. Oh, you got each other! <laughs> yeah, well done. Uh, so, I d well, I saw the I saw the uh, I'm nine launch. Mm -hmm. uh, I could my throttle it, just. Uh, oh, it, so. Uh, so that's how you beat it. You cut his throttle. Yes, I, mean, I have. That's the, the, I'm trying to say. I mean, I always uh, try to keep my situation awareness. When, mm -hmm. when you have your situation awareness, you have more chance to to survive. Well, in this case, he just uh, fired at me. At, uh, I'm seven at point black at the limit, and that, at this, that distance, if you don't know that this firing a semi-active radar missile, was well, it's pretty hard to dodge. Yeah, Roger that. And those those Fox twos that were all fired there, those aim nines and those seventy threes, they are fully fully active um, IR missiles, so they're far and forget. So that's why fourteen zero died, even though the fifteen was down because that missile is obviously. Uh, guiding itself. Right, any parting gifts from anyone? Use your counter measures until you don't have them. Use them according to the threat. Uh, don't conserve your fuel. That's not going to do you any good if you're a flaming wreckage on the ground. It's just going to make your skin burn a bit faster. <laughs> Roger that. Cool. Yeah. All right, thank you, chaps. Um, we'll see what responses we get from this. I mean, that was pretty comprehensive, and I learned a lot of stuff, which is just pretty cool as well. So um, we'll see you in the next movie. Goodbye.